World War I was a devastating war that, after four years, killed millions of people, left millions more injured, and destabilized whole nations. Germany was one of those nations, and suffered from the German Revolution that lasted from 1918 to 1919. Okay, well, revolution, in this case, is a bit of a broad term, since it was made up of separate strikes and revolts and riots, with different leaders, with different purposes. Like, some, for example, was basically just a war for independence, with the ideals of communism in mind. So, it had a lot of civil war, to say. Where the for in the first revolution, the Kaiser was forced off his throne and the Weimar Republic was established. The rest of the revolutions were communist and socialist in nature and failed. But what if the communist revolts didn't fail? What would happen in this alternate timeline? Well, first we must discuss how this would occur, considering it was made up of separate strikes and votes. So, I have decided upon the first communist uprising led by Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht, which also happens to be the revolt with the greatest chance of turning Germany communist while also keeping it united as a whole. Okay, with this we must also talk about how the revolt will seed. In this timeline, I imagine that for it to succeed, the Fry Corps would have to be demilitarized, and when they are called upon, it would take them a longer time for them to get ready. Rosa and Karl will have to leave Berlin, considering they didn't in this timeline and were killed because of it. And it would also have to be supported by the Socialist Democratic Party of Germany. So, more people across Germany as a whole would revolt. So, I'm not going to go into detail of how successful it would have been in real life, but for the theory, we will say that it was successful. And now, Germany would be communist. So, would it be like East Germany in our timeline? without the Soviets being in control of them? No, it would be quite different if it does live up to the ideals of Luxembourgism, which is a communist ideology that is believes in revolutionary socialist democracy and allows for things such as freedom of the press, freedom of opinion, and a general election where multiple parties would be allowed. Now, I can't say if this would be successful, considering this is very different from what has been used in our history, but I am just going to continue on that it was. Now, we must discuss things such as the Soviets and war reparations. War reparations was a major problem for Germany in our timeline. But would it be a problem f for this new communist Germany? No, main reason being that it's very, very likely, unlikely, for a communist nation to pay a capitalist one reparations since they were under the control of the bourgeois elite, and it was doubtful that a war would start over this, especially so soon after World War I. Remember, the revolution would have occurred in 1919, so... It's only going to be a few years after the war. I highly doubt that anyone is going to send their troops back to war over war operations. It would cost far more than it was worth. So, imagine France and Britain leaving Germany alone, for now at least. Okay, for the Soviets. What would their relationship be with Germany? Well, Lenin and Rosa did have their issues, but they were, of course, still friends. Rosa, however, always criticized the Soviet Union about its undemocratic government, 
these nations would certainly have even more problems, especially if Stalin still takes over in this timeline. However, considering that they are the only two communist players in Europe, it would be for basic protect protection that they would stand in an alliance. One thing that would still happen in this timeline, however, would be the Great Depression, which I feel that it w Germany wouldn't be affected that much, considering that they are a communist nation, and chances are they would be somewhat economically isolated, for lack of a better term, I feel, just like the Soviets were. However, they would still be affected more than the Soviets were in this timeline, mainly due to the fact that I feel that there would also be some capital connections. However, it wouldn't nearly be as bad as how Germany was affected in our timeline by the Great Depression. This also means that the Nazis wouldn't rise to power if they still existed in this timeline, of course. Which means there would be no world war in the West. Japan will still try and expand and attack China, and maybe still cause a war with America, but Europe will remain at peace. So what would have truly changed in this timeline? The ideals of communism itself and how it is viewed upon by the rest of the world. In our timeline, communism is viewed upon as a dictatorial ideology. But in this timeline, communism would be viewed in a more positive light. And it is also likely that Luxembourgism, not Marxist-Leninism, will surpass everything else and become dominant communist ideology that will infect multiple nations and cause multiple uprisings after all. It will create a, not only a democratic society, but an equal society. It is not hard to see many people being attracted to those ideals, and there most likely wouldn't be a Cold War, considering there wasn't a World War II in this timeline, so one could still break out. So, with that, I end this timeline. So, so, sorry about how long this video took to come out. I've had homework, a lot of it actually, and I've had to study for a few tests. So, it's taken me a while to finish this. But I can say with certainty that I will get one more video out by the end of the month. The plan is that, we, that I will be making two videos per month. And I also have plans with another YouTuber to make a, vid to make a video on alternate history with. So watch out for that. And if you want to discuss what happened in this timeline, please do so. I will enjoy reading your comments. So, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye, everyone.